you know, Bears fandom, Trent, we're, we're defined by quarterback starvation. Never had a great yep. one. Never, never really. But we've seen so many come in, and really now two these last five years, and watch them be taught. Watch Mitch be taught. Watch Justin be taught. And, and we learned a lot from our conversation with you last fall when you talked about the sequence of exposure um, and, and how you teach a guy. Have you been watching what Justin Fields is being taught this particular training camp, it feels a lot more sensible um, than what had happened with him last year. I have, and I've leaned this training camp on a dear friend of mine who I think studies the position more than anybody in the world, Kurt Warner. So I've been coaching my team, so I've been talking to Kurt about Justin. I've watched all the clips. I haven't watched it with my own eye, but I wanted to hear from Kurt what he's seen. And as the year goes on, I'll study the tape every week, but I'm still probably going to call Kurt and just ask him what he's seeing as well because I trust his voice so much. And I'm seeing just that, the right type of teaching, the right sequencing, the right playbook, the right fits. Uh, he's a guy, if you watch the game against Cleveland, that you noticed when they use multiple tight ends, when they change the launch point of the pocket, when they use action, when they establish a run game, He's so explosive with his arm. He's so explosive with his movements. He's so efficient with his movements that you're going to create, be able to create a lot of big plays. He still has some gaps. And by the way, so did Aaron Rodgers his second year. So did Tom Brady his second year. So did Patrick Mahomes his second year. There's still some gaps when you spread teams out and you have to make those like millisecond decisions and read leverage on defenders and, you know, kind of. Uh, we always call lizard eyeing the defense where one eye is looking left and one eye is looking right. And you kind of have to see these triangles of movements and make really decisive decisions. That's probably going to take a couple years. That's not going to be his fastball. Um, but I like what they're doing. And he looks efficient. I think he worked really hard in the offseason, tightening things up. His feet look tighter. His release looks tighter. Um, and I'm excited about what I'm seeing. I, I, I've been very bullish on Justin Fields. I think he has the right temperament. I think he's got the right professionalism. He's an incredible athlete. I think he has all the traits that can make him into a big-time quarterback. It's just going to take a little time as he grows. He starts layering information. Maybe that's the easiest way to say it is you, you start layering, layering the things you're learning and then working on them in practice and then executing them at a higher level in games. You talk about the gaps that Justin has, like, but where is he good and where is the work still to come? Well, I think what Quincy did more than anything else this offseason was get his base stronger, uh, stay more consistent in a loaded back glute. So that was number one. He'll be more efficient that way. And then number two, he got his torso rotating more. And your, your torso, ro torso rotates more. Sorry, I can't talk. If his torso rotates more going back, his arm will move left, less. And remember, he would get that really long, like the wrist and the ball would go way back. Well, a lot of that happened because that's how he was generating power by a long lever in the backside. But his, his chest, you just take your the middle of your chest, everybody just poke the middle of your chest. That has to go back about three to six inches. Not much more than that, but it has to go back towards your arm. Well, if that happens, now your arm doesn't have to what we call climb as much. It doesn't have to climb back. So you develop a shorter arc in the ball. Remember when Chris Collinsworth would do that thing on NBC where he'd show the arc of the ball? I don't really know what he was getting at, but <laughs> it's important because you do want that arc short. That was another thing of the of the, all the Hall of Fame Pro Bowl quarterbacks was the arc of the ball was pretty tight. Well, the arc of the ball is tight because the chest rotates backwards or back towards your throwing arm. So if it rotates back, you don't need to generate a long lever to develop power now your arc can be shorter and you're going to be more consistent because your release point is going to be more consistent. So I know this is what Quincy worked on him with. It's stuff we've been working on kids from eight years old all the way to the pros for 11, 12 years now. It doesn't change. You just got to find – I always say this is why Quincy's a great coach. This is why Jordan Palmer's a great coach. So while these guys are so great with quarterbacks, early on we talked about, guys, you not only need to understand the principles, you got to find 10 to 15 ways of teaching the same thing. You're saying the same thing, but every kid, player, college player, pro is going to hear it differently. So learn how to use metaphors. Learn how to use analogies. Learn how to find different ways of teaching different people. Because I know my quarterback here who's really good. He, I mean, he's as good as there is in the country. But, you know, the way I talk to him isn't the way I talk to the backup. They're going to, I'm telling them the same thing, but I'm using different ways of messaging because they hear it differently and their bodies feel it differently. 
So you almost have to jump in the body of the kid that you're coaching, kid meaning a pro all the way down to a high school kid, and understand what he's feeling because that's going to help you better explain what you're trying to teach. So we feel like now there is a good, sensible structure in place for Justin to showcase his skills. What kind of throws um, and, and or decisions will we see to find out if he's special? Is it, you know, like, is it about different bits of touch and the arc? Is it about accuracy of a certain kind? Or do, how will we know if we really do have a special quarterback now that the system is sensible? Well, and again, I, I hope that I'm not part of this. I don't want to put like special expectations on a kid in his second year with solid talent, but not unique talent around him. I'm not a Bears hater, by the way. I think their talent's pretty good. I just don't think it's unique. Sure. Right? They don't have any unique difference makers. They have some really good players, but they don't have any unique difference makers. So I think the expectations is I would look at consistency, productive, um, efficient, smart, like if those are the words we're using with Justin after year two, then I think we can maybe start talking about special in year three and four. So I want to I want to level set there, but I think the things for the fans to look at are number one, those third and medium situations where from your eye on the TV it looks like a guy's covered, but then the ball throws him open. So talk about like a speed out. Kurt Warner did a great thing. Please look it up I, again. Kurt's the best. You have the second best on your show. Kurt's the best <laughs> when it comes to we tried when it comes, for Kurt. To, we tried when for, it comes yeah. to breaking this stuff. He's way more expensive. Than you. Too, too many highlights for the open. Yeah, that was the yeah. problem. Yeah, exactly. Good point. Yeah, the open would be like nine minutes, not ninety seconds. Yeah, that's a problem. So, Kurt brought up a great point with me, and he does it on this week's uh, thing. He does. He, he calls it study ball. And everybody that loves quarterback play should watch study ball. He talks about how you anticipate these tight window leverage throws. And, and I did it okay, but it's part of the job. Like you have to see leverage on a defender. He's not open yet. In fact, he's not even coming out of his break. And while you're seeing that leverage, you also have to see the second element of the defense and know that it's a safe throw and then throw a catchable throw to kind of throw a guy open. So that's the number. Th and a lot of that happens as spread looks. So when it's a single back, three wide receiver, four wide receiver set, uh, you know, three receivers tight end, or if it's a four wide receiver set, that's when zone coverage is man coverages. There's leverage somewhere and you got to find the leverage and you got to throw these nice anticipated balls, balls uh, away from leverage. That's number one I'd look for. And then number two, how he handles a cluttered pocket and not just run. Now I want him to run, especially when it's open in the middle. Okay. So when, when the, when the, Stunts go left and right, and there's a middle opening to run. Even if there's a spy, I would be the first person to tell Justin to use his unique athleticism and go get the yards. By the way, remember Aaron Rodgers early in his career was a big runner, ran a lot on third down, ran right up the middle, stole a lot of first downs. I'm talking about now they've stunted to clutter the middle, and you can't go middle. Does he slide right left, bounce right left with his eyes downfield, or does he bolt? If he's bolting, he's not seeing the whole picture like a special player. If he's sliding and moving and creating what I call the Ben Roethlisberger pocket, the mm. pocket, the extended pocket, so it's not right down the butt crack of the center. It might be the butt crack of the tackle. But he basically just moved himself into a soft spot in the pocket and then makes these piercing throws downfield. Now I'll be, I'll be in my office going, hell yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Like, that's what the best ones do. The average ones, like myself, we do it at times, but ultimately we bolt. And we try to extend the play way out on the perimeter. And very rarely do good things happen out on the perimeter after you've started in the pocket. Because now you're in a true scramble drill and everything's kind of off balance in the secondary with your receivers. And you don't know the timing of the routes. And if it's a good secondary, they're playing downhill on you. They're on top of the defense. They're looking at this, and they're breaking downhill on the defenders. That's why you see so many replays of a, of a quarterback, like, say, he's moving right, and he, he gets out of there too fast. He's rolling to his right, and you go, oh, that corner route's open. And he goes to throw the corner route, but by the time he releases it, to the time the ball gets there, that safety has now gotten in front of the receiver and picks it off or makes a play on the ball.